no law. Amen. That is the word from the Lord. Then it's not going to our Decalogue, which is on the upper left-hand corner. It reads, Hear the commandments of God to his people. I am the Lord God who brought you out of bondage. You shall have no other gods before me. You should not make for yourself any idols the name of the Lord your God. Oh, no, you should not invoke with malice the name of the Lord your God. Remember the seventh day and keep it holy. Honor your mother and your father. You should not commit murder. You should not commit adultery. You should not steal. You should not lie. You should not covet anything that belongs to your neighbor. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Amen. Just for those who are tuning in via uh, Facebook Live and those who are in the place today, feel free to add Apostle Martina Wade Hill on Facebook. If you want to be a blessing to the church items that we are always welcoming for those to bring in our Kleenex cleaning items such as Lysol, Pine Salt, gloves, especially gloves, disinfectant spray, disinfectant wipes. We go through the disinfectant wipes pretty quick. Cleaning cloths, we go through those pretty quick. Paper towel, we go through that pretty quick. So paper towel, napkins, toilet tissue, dusters, bathroom decor, please no carpet and mats or toilet seat covers. We need a hand sanitizer, a bright storage, containers with drawers, Folding tables, both square and rectangle, and file cabinets. We just want to thank all those who have donated so graciously to the church. We have plenty of air fresheners and soap and different things like that. We are so thankful for all your donations. Um, we truly appreciate you and we love you so much. Amen. Now who's excited for the word? Woo! Yes, so let's go to prayer. Amen. Amen. Then you should tell me, Father, we thank you, Lord God. We thank you for the woman of God, Apostle Bartina Wayhill, for coming forth with the mighty word of God, Lord God. We ask that you just continue to set a fire in her belly for you, Lord God, that, Lord God, that the people will be set free on today, that they'll be healed, that they'll be restored, that they'll be delivered, Lord God, that it will pierce their hearts, Lord God, that they, we ask that you open their ears and um, hearts and minds of the people in the audience today and those who are to India. Facebook Live, that you are just doing a mighty good work for your people, and that it is being sold on good ground, and that your word will never turn void unto them. We thank you, we praise you, in Jesus' mighty name, let us all say amen. amen. Now let us receive the word from Apostle Martina Way Hill, amen. amen. Come on, come on, y'all clap your hands for the Lord. Oh, yeah. Let's have real worship in here. Come on, let's have some real worship. That's all you got. Don't get tired. This is the first church. Come on. Somebody say hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Please turn your Bible to Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6 verses 13 through 18. Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 13 through 18. Amen. Amen. And I'm going to be reading the New International Version. And it reads, Therefore put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes with the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one, Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all God's people. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, teach. Preach through me, O God. Remove all flesh and shift this place. That the word that's spoken on today will give revelation, 
knowledge, wisdom, and know-how. And Lord, have your Holy Spirit be able to help us plant this seed of life to grow into an amazing tree of fruit in Jesus' mighty name. And everyone agreed and said amen. amen. I'm going to speak on the subject, how to walk in the full armor of God. Amen. How to walk in the full armor of God. Now, when the Lord gave me this message, I was thinking, Lord, I've heard this preached a million times. How can I say something different? I would hear about it and say, wear the full armor. Everybody like, yeah. Wear the helmet, yeah. Wear the breastplate, yeah. Sword and shield and, and belt, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we say, amen, go. But God wants to do something different in this text to make it come to life. Y'all say life, Jesus. And we just declare in Jesus' name that something to spoken to you today that will help you learn how to put the full honor of God. Amen? So let's break the text apart. Now in verse 13, I'm going to reread it. It says, therefore, put on the full armor of God. So that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground after you have done everything. It's interesting that the scripture says full armor. It's the assumption that perhaps we don't put on the full armor. Oh, y'all come with me. Perhaps maybe you left the house and only wore the helmet but left the chest all out. Come on, somebody. Perhaps you didn't have the helmet, didn't have the breastplate, you brought your sword. But you did not have to block nothing. Come on, somebody. And so right now, I find that a lot of times when we go through spiritual attacks and it weighs heavy on us, that just perhaps we did not have the full armor, but we had a piece of armor on us. Yeah. I need somebody to say amen. Yeah. I, 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 I preach all the time about if you don't know the whole scripture, while you're learning the whole scripture, uh, pick one or two verses that you can that really speaks to you and, and, and apply it and use that and keep building on it more and more as you're studying. But what happens if you don't know how to use that sword? What happens if you don't know how to use your shield? You know, equipment means nothing if you don't have any skill to use it. You can tell me there's a stove over there and I go cook and I'm like, if I don't know how to cook, but I do. But if I don't know how to cook, I'm going to look at that stove and say, what am I supposed to do? Because we need to be taught how to walk in the full armor. Somebody say amen. amen. And so here it is, the scripture is explained to us how important it is because in order for us to stand our ground, we need to be able to walk in the full honor. So let me get this straight. If I don't get dressed, I'm naked. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Only one person laughed, one person said it again, and everybody said, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> If I'm naked, then I ain't ready for my day. Right. I ain't ready to talk to nobody. I definitely ain't ready to walk out the door. <laughs> I'm not ready to interact business because I'm not fully dressed. And many of us leave the house spiritually naked yeah. and wonder why the devil is after you. Because you are not covered in any way. So it's time to walk out of ignorance and laziness and start really knowing how it is to use this godly spiritual equipment that God has had readily available for his children. Somebody say amen. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so there's seven ways to walk in the full armor of God. Based on this scripture, it's seven ways. So here's the first one. Stand firm in the truth. Stand firm in the truth. I'm just working with Ephesians 6. Amen? Amen. So let's go to verse 14. It reads, Stand firm then, when the belt of truth is buckled around your waist. So, I'm supposed to stand firm with the belt of truth buckled around my waist. Stand firm in truth. 
Raise your hand if you think you stand firm in truth 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh-oh. That means that sometimes you start creeping on a lie. Yeah. yeah. Start creeping on false things, whether external or internal. But then we complain that the devil's after us. I've had, I'll tell you how many times I've been to these people when calamity hits their home. They say, I've done this, I've done that, I've my ties, I did this and this and this. I said, mm hmm. I said, well, what's happening? And you, it, it, with discernment, you can tell if things are falling apart because the enemy doesn't want you to elevate or things are falling apart because there's something that you've done that's this please God. Mm -hmm. And it's funny how. We'll do the checks and balances in the word, but we'll overlook our sin. Yeah. We'll say, Lord, I pay my tax. Lord, I go to the prayer meeting. Lord, I miss the Sunday since 92. But what you do Monday through Saturday night, let me stop lying, Sunday afternoon. <laughs> the Saturday night might be slightly questionable of your way. Let's really look at it. Are you standing firm in what you claim is the truth for your life? So here it is. The Bible describes truth as a belt that we need to wear. Now why is truth a belt? I was looking at this and the Lord showed me, actually he revealed to me uh, a time when I had went to work one day with a pants that was slightly, slightly too big for me. I had to lose a little weight. I thought, I need to get a bigger belt for these pants. Maybe I can get by today. You know, you wear that extra long top. <laughs> pull it up. You know, and then you know you got to pull, pull it up every time you stand up. You need a belt. But I figured I could catch it. Well, I overestimated my skills. <laughs> so I remember going to work, and I had finished the meeting and all that, and one of my girlfriends was working with me at the time. And so... I forgot to pull my pants, so when I stood up, you know, they just start falling. My girl said, oh, 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 glory to God. She called me. I said, oh, no, I need a bill. I had to stop at the store. I said, how do I need a house without a bill? Next time, if it don't fit right, if it don't wear it, or get a bill. If it don't fit, must be clean. <laughs> so wait a minute. Let's look at this. How many times have you left? without the belt of truth around your waist. And things around you start falling apart. Yeah. Your beliefs start falling to you, not the waist side, but your ankles. Yeah. Things start dropping. Because that day you decided, I don't feel like going the extra mile to make sure I have the spiritual belt of truth with me. So let's say amen. amen. We cannot be weak in Christianity. Some people think that Christians are weak. The devil is alive. Read your Bible. I know a lot of saints in there that do a lot of raw stuff. Let's keep it real. We can't be wavering Christians. You know, I'm tired of that. Let me explain to you what a waver looks like. I went to a few meetings, and some places don't like apostles. They don't understand it. The tradition doesn't make room for it even though the Bible talks about it all the time. But some traditions are offended by that, whether you are man or female. So some places I go, they call me pastor, which I don't have a problem with because I am a pastor. But I have had to tone down my anointing to make other people feel comfortable. Y'all still with me? How many times have you hid who you really are so that somebody's other, somebody's life don't look as them. Mm. Come on, to dim your life so you don't stand out as much. It's time out for that. That's weak and that's wavering. Mm. Oh, it should be clapped around the room for that. Mm. We hide it on the job. We hide it everywhere. We need to start being the light of the world. I remember one time I was working for uh, Chrysler, and at this time it was Daimler Chrysler. And so um, they wanted to know, um, you did you use yourself? It's like, you know, orientation. This was my first real job out of college, okay? 
I had graduated on a Thursday and started working that following Monday. And so I was working down the crash, it was orientation, and everyone had to stand up and say their name and say something personal about themselves, some little thing about themselves. So people stood up and said, well, you know, I'm a parent, I'm a spouse, um, I like to read, I like to run, whatever they like to say. I thought, got up to the CEO of Diamond Christ, I said, hi, my name, my name is Martina Wade, and I'm a minister. The hush around that room. So I remember the person next to me saying, you ain't going to be here at all. And I said, I'm going to be here as long as God won't be here. But I remember the scripture that said, if you deny me, then I will deny you. So I did not deny it. And so I remember that going on throughout my life, never to hide my anointing. But what happens is the enemy, if he can't get you to deny it, he'll get you to dim it. Mm. So everybody across the room who is in their anointing in order to make people feel more comfortable, and I'm going to say something else specific. If somebody starts talking a certain way that's out of the will of God, and you want them to feel comfortable, and they'll say, oh, I'm sorry for saying that. And you say, oh, that's okay. No, it's not okay. Y'all hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, it, tell me, I want to minister to them. You can minister to them right now by making them respect you. Do not tone down and do not waver. We can just go early and say, turn down for what? <laughs> It's time for us to make a stand for who we, who we say we believe in. So if this is you, I want you to say, I repent right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Also, do not be easily deceived. The belt of truth is a gift of discernment. It will help you to identify the trick of the enemy because you're able to stand firm and resist. Truth can always figure out and discern what's a lie. So if you're walking in truth, then your discernment will be able to see what's a false spirit and what's the Holy Spirit. So do not walk at all outside your door. Matter of fact, when you wake up in the morning, because then you'll find you by your address. You walk, operate with the belt of truth. Because that allows you to even sniff out where the enemy seems at. Amen? Amen. Alright, so here's the second one. How to walk in the full armor of God. The second one is keep your righteousness in place. I feel like teaching today. Keep your righteousness in place. So now we're, we're back at verse 14. Verse 14 says, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist and with the breastplate of righteousness in place. And so in other words, keep your morals intact. Amen? Amen? Our Christian morals can become damaged if we don't protect it. So what you believe and why you believe it can be perverted or confused if you don't arm yourself. You ever believe in something and you start talking to somebody that seems to be just a little bit more convincing than you, and all of a sudden you start questioning if what you believe is right around? Come on. It's all about us being able to stand firm. What is it that God is speaking to you? And do not waver. Somebody say amen. amen. Keep your righteousness protected. Keep your righteousness intact. Don't allow someone who just seems to be more happy than you, seems to be getting everything that you want, seems to be, I'm preaching to somebody, I work hard and I, God makes me wait. This person, they just ratchet and God gives them everything. <laughs> then we go home to press. Oh, I, I, I need to speak to somebody who knows what I'm talking about. You go home to press and you start crying, why, Lord, why do you hate me? Oh my God. And think about what I did in a way. I said I'm sorry but we do that don't we yeah. then we, look here you are in the choir <laughs> usher the first person at the church the last person at the church cut off people who ain't walking in the Lord so you're lonely 
ain't got no friends because you told all your friends if you ain't saved, I ain't your friend no more. Oh, I'm talking to somebody. I'm gonna, look, look, I'm going to preach to myself and have a good time. Amen. So you got your dog, but a dog world is... <laughs> so you just sitting here like, Lord, look, you saw me come on the radio, you think it's for you? Yeah, yeah. All by myself, yes, huh? <laughs> and then somebody in there looking like you're living their best life, going straight to hell. Yeah. And you sit up here jealous as I don't know what, boy, they happy. They can just do what they want to do. They're in bondage. Because they have to answer for what it is that they do. Oh, I, I'm going to say right here, it's hot, but it's so right. <laughs> I'm going to say right here, because I want to talk to people who are struggling with keeping their righteousness in place. Mm -hmm. I, I'm tired of being good. <laughs> it don't get me nowhere. If I could, if I could, oh, look, don't, let me talk to somebody who got financial problems. Yeah. <laughs> Keep your righteousness in place. I hear I work day and night and I pass and I still can't pay my bills. Let me go to the casino. I'm tired. Yo, woo, I just caught me real quick. Y'all look at me like, mmm. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> can't pay your bills. Let me call up my ex. They do anything for me when we were together. And God delivered you from your ex. Amen. Ooh, this is a good sermon. <laughs> Going back to old heathen ways because we can't wait on God to fulfill a miracle. But the scripture says in order to walk in the full armor of God, we have to keep our righteousness in place. In order to keep it in place, we have to be positioned. The only position I know is a prayer position. Come on, somebody. Protect your righteousness. Your righteousness lays right up there with integrity. And if your integrity and character is shaky, do not expect the favor of God to be resting where there is sin. Let's say you didn't do anything. You just thought about a whole bunch of stuff. <laughs> so, on the outside, the, like the ideal Christian. On the inside, fresh. Renegade. You done thought about anything from the porn store to AA meeting. Because in here, you ain't really sold out, but you all about the words. Keep your righteousness in place. Amen. That's the only way you're going to be able to make it. See, the Bible declares that the righteousness is the breastplate. Now, let's talk about the breastplate for a second. So here it is. To protect your righteousness, you're going to have to wear something that what I would consider like a bulletproof vest. Y'all know about bulletproof vests? So it covers usually from here to down here. Am I right? Yeah. So it covers it. The reason why it covers those particular areas because your core has some vital organs that if you get attacked in those places, it could cause a fatality. Uh -huh. Now watch this. The heart, that part is important in the spirit. Because it holds the emotions and the destiny. The Bible declares that whatever a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So if you get, you receive a spiritual attack in heart matters, it could destroy your destiny. If you receive a spiritual attack in the areas of emotions, it could take you out of God's will. The reason why that we have to wear the breastplate is because it covers the stomach. The stomach in the spirit digests knowledge and it bursts out beginnings. John chapter 7 verse 38. Write this down if you don't know. John chapter 7 verse 38. It says, He that believeth in me 
as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living what? Water. Water. So, rivers of living water rest in your spiritual belly. This is why when you come up for altar call and they lay hands on you, they touch you here in your brow and in your stomach because there's an impartation that activates the flow. Yeah. This is why that when you start feeling a stirring in the business, in, in your belly, the Bible talks about the stirring of the gift. The stirring of the gift does not happen here, but it happens in the flow. So if the flow gets dry, you do not birth anything. If the flow gets dry, then you can't operate anything because the anointing rests. Here. Amen. Amen. You cannot walk out your door without the breastplate of righteousness. You can't have everybody touch your sick. Raise your hand if you've been pregnant or you know somebody who's pregnant. Do they allow everybody to touch their belly? No! Why? Impartation. So, if this is where you bear, why would you let that get dry? If this is where it gives life, why would you allow the enemy to attack that part? Why would you let that part be wide open for the enemy to come on in when people are possessed with demons? They rest here, right up in here, and they suck the water like little maggots. So when you cast out spirits, a lot of times they touch here. If it's an emotional issue, they'll touch here. They touch the core. The core. The enemy comes through the opening of your gates, but the core is attacked. So whether it comes to your ear or your eyes, it always hits the core. Mm. Somebody say protect your core. Protect, protect your core. core. Job chapter 40, verse 16, just, just write that down. It reads, Behold now, there is strength in his loins, and there is power in the muscles of his belly. There's power in the muscles of your belly. If you operate in righteousness, God will strengthen the muscles of your belly and you increase the authority that you walk in. If you ever pray by for yourself, I, I pray. There's prayer positions. And a lot of times, you come here your hand, you walk and pray like you pace and you pray. They say that's, that's like a lion roaring. That's, a, that's like a, a walk of authority. You lay hands on your stomach and you speak the word. Fill yourself back up and you speak the word. It will increase the amount of power because it begins to stir up the gift. When you first wake up, how many of y'all can just wake up and jump and just woo? Have, have, have your full day as soon as you wake up. You got to get going. Some of y'all need a coffee and a shower. You need about two hours and then be ready to go and talk to me for the next two hours. Some of y'all can you talk to within the first 10 minutes. So don't know what you need about. On my third cup, we can have a conversation. Because it takes you a while to stir. You lay hands on your belly, try it, and start speaking over your life. Try it right now. Start speaking over your life. And I declare in Jesus' name that there will be a stirring in your belly that will increase the amount of authority that you want. The colon in the intestine, it allows the body to get rid of negativity out your life. The Bible declares, if you read the scripture, it talks about the dome gate. It speaks very much part of the area that dispels the dome gate. We need that because we can't keep toxins in. Amen? Amen. Watch this. Matthew 15, 17. It says, do you not understand that everything that goes into your mouth passes through the stomach and is eliminated? 
The colon in the spirit realm is considered an eliminator to destroy anything that has absence of value. So if by chance you've received something that does not value your life, there's an opportunity for it to be eliminated. Mm. So we're saying it. All right, what was the first one? Number two? So here's the third one. Be ready to be peaceful. Be ready to be peaceful. So we're back to Ephesians 6. Verse 15 says, And with your feet fill it with readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. Who knew that one of the greatest gifts and weapons of warfare that we had was our feet because it helps us be peaceful. You know why? Because they start starting stuff you know. <laughs> but no, we need to be planted in peace. It's our ability to be calm and, and peaceful in heated situations. Now I can ask you to raise your hand, but if anyone who struggles with anger or anger-based thoughts, you don't think I'm not angry, I actually add to. Okay, that's anger. Okay? If you struggle in those areas, frustration, if those are areas where you have strongholds, then you have to understand that God has given us all the ability to overcome it because we all are planted in peace. There's an anointing there that God will give you a way of escape in that scripture. Yeah. He will give you the ability to tone down a heated situation. You never ask God, Lord, help me. Some of us ask, Lord, help me bite my tongue. But how about, Lord, help my mind? Lord, help me have a soft temperament. Some of y'all ask for patience, and that's not quite what it is you need. You need a soft uh, temperament. The Bible says, uh, you know, to be quick to make peace, but slow to anger. Ask God to make you slow to anger. Patience is not always the key. You can be patient with somebody and be mad all the many years at how long you been with so-and-so? We've been together about 10 years. And they make you mad every day. That's not what you need. <laughs> Some of y'all need self-control. Every time you get mad, you throw something against the wall. That ain't it. Self-control, slow to temper. That's Bible. Amen? Amen. Colossians 3.15. Colossians 3.15. It says, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Oh, hallelujah. I feel a breakthrough. Let the peace of Christ rule in your heart. This is how you pray for peace. You lay hands on this part, your core. Lord Jesus, let the peace of Christ rule in my heart. And what did we say last week? And Lord bless me with a sound mind. Yes. The mind of Christ. The Bible says, since as members of one body, you are called to peace. What are you called to? Peace. You ain't called to smack them in the face. You ain't called to cuss them out. You ain't called to cut them off. You called to what? Peace. I think I put something like that a few months ago. We're called to peace. The, the, the Bible said, blessed be the peacemakers. And the Bible said, and then be thankful. So wait a minute, Lord. You mean I can't tell them off and I got to be glad about it? <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Last thing you need is somebody to say, I ain't gonna mess with them, they crazy, but they ain't really sad. Uh -huh. yeah. I say it every time. Mind you, peace is not a weakness, it's a strength if you know how to use it. You know, for some people in the military, they know how to kill people with their hands. They ain't use nothing, they just touch them and they just boom. Like, Whoa, how you do that? Guess what? Because they know what they do. You understand what I'm telling you? Know this word. Well, you can be just like this. In the name of Jesus. Let's see. Jesus' name. It's gone. It's, it's done. It's done. I felt many times when I was praying before I said amen, the phone rang. I said, oh, hallelujah. I remember one time, Philip and I, we were in great need. It was a few years back. And he said, baby, we need to pray together. I said, okay. And so we got to pray. And I remember my husband got on his knees 
We had hardwood floor on the upstairs. On a hardwood floor, he got on his knees and he began to seek out God. And I stood there in agreement. And before we could say amen, the phone rang, and that's exactly what we had needed. Amen. We have to make sure that we know that God will bless us and keep us and stay peaceful in our minds about it. Oh, that is a practice. That is a skill. That is something you're going to have to work on. You are not going to leave here and then go home tonight and say, I got it. It's with practice. Because practice means what? Perfect. Practice what it is that you call to be, which is peace. All right, what was the first one? I know it's more people than one. What's the first one? Number two? Three? Y'all can be whispering. Three? Here's the four four. Take up the shield of faith. So Ephesians 6.16 says, in addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Faith. The shield of faith. And it extinguishes arrows from the devil. So, you got kid, anybody here who was a kid back in the 80s? I may say born, I say kid. Amen. So, when I was a kid, me and my oldest brother. My brother, he played with action figures. I played with bottles. So back then, Ken dolls weren't very popular. So my barbies didn't have no husbands or boyfriends or nothing like that. Y'all still with me? Yeah. They was pretty with their pretty dresses and I had a pretty car, but they had no husband. So my brother had these he made. And I thought this email would be a wonderful husband for my partner. It was a height difference, but I felt like the noisy was there, it'll make it happen. So this he man came with a sword and a shield. So my brother would play the he man with the Mr. T doll. And so Mr. T and he man, they would fight. So I'd watch. He got two of them I can take. Perfect. <laughs> so, one day, I asked my brother, why does a he-man have a sword and a shield? And he said, the sword is to fight with and the shield is to block from the enemy. I said, wait a minute. We need to know how to block the enemy with the shield of faith. We don't even have to worry about the enemy coming here if our block is tight. Oh, see, y'all know what I'm talking about right here. We don't have to worry about if your block is tight. I said up here one time, how many of y'all watch boxing? When I was a kid, man, before pay-per-view, HBO was it. Yeah. We used to watch boxing all the time. I would watch games with a, with a fight. The fighter would block for the first round. I'm like, man, how long are you going to dance? But it was, a, it was a tactic to wear out your opponent. How many times have you guys just took the time to just block the enemy? Yeah. Enemy coming after your finances, block. Enemy coming after uh, things on the job, block. Enemy coming after this, block. He coming after your mind, block. Coming after your dreams, block. Coming after your spouse, block. Coming after your boo, block. Mm-hmm. Block, block. So my way to have a sword. So I got the sword here, and I got my, I said, this is going to be my shield. Block, 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 block. It's like an exercise move, like high boat. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Because that's what you have to do. Block and stick, block and stick. It's called stick and move, too. Right, yeah. right. You block, thank you. And you learn how to do it effectively. You won't even have to worry about what's going on with the core. 
That's only if your block was a little off. Right. Come on, somebody. Uh -huh. Because it keeps your enemy at a distance. Your faith will keep the devil at a distance if it's strong. If your faith got holes in it, the areas of where it's got holes, it will come to attack your core. Uh -huh. Y'all still with me? Do this. You got homework. I ain't gonna come and check it. This is between you and God. Your homework is assess the areas where you're strong in faith and in the areas where you're weak. So maybe finance is not your issue. God provides for you and you have over and abundance. But maybe you've got some issues with trust, issues in relationships that has holes in it. And the enemy gets all up in there every time. Mm -hmm. Assess where you're weak and where you're strong. On the areas where you're strong, leave with your strong foot. The areas where you're weak, work on it. Somebody say amen. amen. So number five, take the helmet of self. Take the helmet of salvation with you. Take the helmet of salvation with you. So Ephesians 6 and 17 says, take the helmet. Now what does that mean? When the scripture says, take this helmet with you. The Bible declares very clearly that this is what we need to protect us. Now, recently, my husband, he loves to cycle. And he got into a, a, a little bike, bender fender. And he would have been more hurt if he ain't had his helmet on. Yeah. That's what the spiritual helmet is for us to have. Salvation is protecting you that when you fall, you're able to get up. Watch this. The Bible says, unto him who is able to keep you from falling. Unto him who is able to keep you from falling. If you do not submit your life to Christ, then guess what? How can he keep you from falling? That helmet keeps you from hurting yourself when things that happen in your life, you still bless. This happened, but God, man, I'm still blessed. This took place, but it only happened one second. God came in. The enemy thought he had me pinned down, but God came in. That's because it's the helmet of salvation that keeps you. You can't be out here fighting the devil and leaving yourself without saying, I tell you the truth, you are not a very convincing Christian if you are not, if you are not saved. If you, somebody asks you a Christian, you tell about what that means, that is an issue. If somebody asks you if you say, you like, well, what does that mean? I'm baptized? No. It means that you confess and then are you a follower of Christ? Baptism is only to show public knowledge ceremony to show that you have given your life to Christ. We can't leave without our helmet. Most of us have our helmet, but we get everything else. The helmet helps you think safe, too. It helps you make safe decisions. So if you have problems controlling your thoughts, God is giving you the power to work on that. Amen? Amen. Six. Take the word of God with you. Ephesians 6 and 16 says, Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. The word of God you will fight the devil with. The helmet will block them, but it ain't going to fight you, honey. You're going to need to know that sword and how to use it well. I know a lot of Christians with big swords and have no idea how to use them. They'll spit out scriptures and conversation, don't know what they need. I'll be reading the scripture. Greater is he that is within me than he is in the world. And some people do not know what that means, but they'll spit it out. Greater is the Holy Spirit that's in you than the devil that's out there. Pray the scriptures. How many of you know that that's what you're supposed to do and that's actually how you pray properly? How many of you do freestyle most of the time? Add that to the list of the weak parts. 
this word has power. You know how I know? Because the Bible says, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God and it was God. So does the word have power based on that text? And so if you pray with scripture and with faith in Jesus' name, we got a power packed in prayer, now don't we? Yeah. Yeah. But we freestyle and pray out our feelings. And then we put Jesus' name on it. Oh, it's probably about 50 50, because maybe, maybe just maybe because you had a lot of fresh in that prayer, it probably stunk and didn't make it to heaven. Do I say it like that? The Bible says the prayers of the righteous have an amazing sense. So if you got flesh all in your prayer, does their flesh smell good? No. Will it make it into heaven? No. So it'll fall, won't it? Then who hears your prayer? Satan. Satan. I guarantee you, there's no such thing as prayers going unheard. Somebody's listening. Yeah. We hear, oh, how many prayers going unheard? No, no, how many prayers that God just did not hear? But somebody heard them. Pray with scripture. Amen. Add a scripture to your prayer. God, you said in your word, dot, dot, dot. God, this is what you said. You said your people shall, da, 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 da. Do you understand? That's how you want to have power when you pray. Take the word of God with you. God does not honor when you manipulate scripture though. Some of us will take the scripture and manipulate it as some license. Well, you know, God says, you know, be fruitful and multiply. You got 10 kids by 10 different brothers. <laughs> Said, be fruitful and multiply. That's not what he meant. Some of y'all alcoholics talking about some why it makes a heart mad. Well, I hear these things. We have to make sure that we don't abuse the word of God, but to use it for what? It's a children's prayer. Use it for power. Amen? Amen. Okay, here's the last one. What was number one? Two. And pray. Be alert and pray. Ephesians 6 18. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all of the Lord's people. Amen. Don't just pray for yourself and let everybody else have their own. God said, for all the Lord's people. And here's something else. The Lord said, put, put it on my heart very strong. If you have an ought against your brother, keep your mouth off of him. Yeah. I'm going to pray for you. Is that witchcraft? Are you really seeking God about helping them? Because I guarantee you, if you've got a nasty spirit toward them, then whatever you have to say is not going to be pure. God ain't going to hear it. The devil's going to hear it, and there's going to be some issues. And some of us are fall into witchcraft and new age paganism. Because our heart was funky when it came time to pray. If I feel like I have the ought against somebody or I feel some kind of way, I deal with me and my emotions before I seek God about the situation. Because I know that whatever I speak is going to render. And I don't want to put seeds out there that's not holy. One time I had to fast for about seven days. I could not even begin to pray about the situation. The only thing I can say is, Lord, you handle it. Not take care of me because I'm hurt. And I dealt with my hurt and why I'm hurt. And God had to leave my wounds and be there for me. Because I could not pray for them or the situation because I have flesh all up in it. That's what being alert is. Know yourself and keep it real. If you know you got drama in this area, don't you go to the throne with no witchcraft prayers. Deal with yourself and deal with your heart. Get healing. So I said, I, you know, sometimes you gotta have somebody else pray for me. I need you to break this situation because I don't trust myself. I'm wounded. Yeah. Yeah. 
It is time to be effective. This is how you walk with the full honor of God. And it's a lot of work, isn't it? When you pray, ask God, help me to be able to raise myself to the standard in which I can walk in the full armor of God in Jesus' name. And you study and you work on yourself and you learn what it is to be saved for real and be able to work on you so that the enemy ain't got a shot trying to mess with anything that God has for you. Amen? Come on, clap for him. That was the Holy Ghost correction. My hand would be wondering. But the Lord be praised because if he loves us, he corrects us. Dear Christians, Heavenly Father, we just love you. We bless you. Help us to be right with you. Help us to be able to walk in the ways that you have us to walk. Help us to be able to be equipped to be able to walk in the standard that you've called us to be in with the full armor. Lord, we just thank you for this work that you will let it marinate and to simmer, that we will be changed and convicted to actually be the standard of which you have called to be, which is holy. So I thank you. Be with us. Oh God, be with us. Give us what we need and help us to be slow to anger, but quick to obedience. And we ask all these things in the matchless name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Anyone who desires personal one on one prayer, please come to God.
Praise the Lord. At this time, it's time for giving. Amen. You can act excited. I'm not. Or if you have PayPal, make it on PayPal and the email's there. 